Madison campus. Does anybody actually follow the Metro campus basketball team? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, good. Because I went to bed early last night, missed the game entirely, but uh, go up to you. Again, so I can either cheer for FDU at this point or I can cheer for Seton Hall. I'm a Rutgers guy, I'm not cheering for Seton Hall ever in my life. So, go up to you. Uh, all right, so we're gonna talk about transitioning to professional employment today. Uh, obviously, we're down to FDU. I am Brandon Smith. So, quick introduction. Some of you I recognize, I've met in the past. Some of you I haven't. Um, I'm the Human Resources Manager for the CBiz New York office. I also cover three other offices within CBiz, so that would be CBiz East in Maryland, CBiz Cumberland, Maryland, and also CBiz KA Consulting, KA Consulting. Uh, the first three groups are all financial services groups, so traditional accounting, tax, and advisory. KA Consulting is a strictly uh, healthcare consulting practice with a little bit of finance thrown into it. Graduated uh, Rutgers College, class of 2010, the last, the last group of Rutgers College students. Uh, so that was an exciting time. Unfortunately, the economy was also at the bottom at that point. Uh, so I ended up going into the Rutgers University School of Management and Labor Relations, getting my degree in HR management. Um, and then I jumped right into public accounting. So I had started my career working for Wisson Company, a firm that some of you may be familiar with. Uh, came over to CBiz about three and a half years ago now and have really enjoyed my time. Um, so enough about me. We'll talk a little bit about our agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about creating a positive impression, uh, networking, what to expect as a newcomer. Some of you are already interning. Some of you are going to be looking to intern. Uh, some of you are going full time in the very near future. So a lot of exciting things. And then finally, what's going to be expected of you. Uh, but first, let's do a quick overview on CBiz. That way you guys can learn more about us. Um, Tenth largest accounting firm in the country. Uh, we've got over 100 locations ranging from Boston, Maryland, Boston, Maryland, Boston, Massachusetts, all the way out to LA, uh, and then down to Boca Raton in Florida. So a lot going on within the firm. Uh, about 5,000 associates, and we're pushing a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, we'll probably hit that threshold this year. Um, so we're excited for it. Um, I'm expecting that there's going to be a big, big party over it. Uh, so we'll see what happens when we get there. The reality of CBIS is that we're split into two divisions. One is the national practice that I talked about. So we've got our benefits and insurance group. Um, they do uh, retirement planning services, outsourced HR, uh, insurance groups, things of that nature. On the financial services side, we are your traditional accounting tax advisory practices. Um, there's also one additional financial services group in the state of New Jersey. It's located down in Lawrenceville. Um, they do Valuation. So the valuation practice is down there. So if anyone wants to travel that far south, by all means, feel free to apply to that. It's a good group. New York staff, um, at this point, it's actually 175 employees. Um, need to get that file updated a little bit. Um, so we've grown quite a bit in the last uh, six months or so since I've put this together. Uh, our group is now heading up a couple of national initiatives, including launch of a national career practice for CBiz, so uh, quite a bit going on there. Uh, we were the 2008, we were named to the 2018 Forbes America's Best Mid-Sized Employers list. Uh, we were just announced as the healthiest employer in New York City, which is a weird thing for me to say, because um, I know about my personal eating and exercise habits. Um, Pretty good staff to managing director level uh, ratio, rather. Uh, managing directors within our firm are what would be traditionally partners at other firms. And really we work in a number of industries, but those are the top four that we work within. So the things that drive the New York economy, uh, apparel and consumer products, software and technology, uh, private equity and hedge funds, and then finally a lot of rich people in New York. Um, 10 years ago now, CBiz was acquired CBiz New York was acquired as a firm called Mahoney Cohen. Um, so really a group can be split into two practices. Uh, Mahoney Cohen traditionally is the CBiz ATA group, so tax, tax and advisory. Um, but then we also have what we call CBiz Corporate Recovery Services. And corporate recovery and litigation services at this point um, 
works predominantly in the litigation support practice uh, and in that area above all else under restructuring and uh, bankruptcy. So uh, that group is, if anybody's interested in that group, uh, wants to hear more about it, we are recruiting interns for the practice. So they, they're led by a true dynamo, uh, one of the leading thinkers in this type of work. And uh, so she's been really successful in what she does. Uh, great people, great place. This is our HR philosophy. Um, so obviously we're gonna do the best we can to provide you all the skills that you need to be successful within your career, but we also wanna create a great place for you to work. Um, so we've got, uh, we allow our employees up to 24 hours to um, pursue volunteer opportunities outside of the things that we already do as a firm. So we'll do an annual food drive where we compete against CBiz offices across the country. Uh, we do a lot of work with Dress for Success through the CBiz Women's Advantage. Um, then we do a whole bunch of annual events, a bunch of fun things that I think I'm going to be highlighting. So, uh, 20th anniversary, pretty exciting time for us. That was a couple years ago. Uh, we did a sock hop, collected I think over 10,000 pairs of socks <laughs> to be donated. So when you think about um, natural, natural disasters, uh, people send food, people send water, people send clothing, shoes, they forget socks. It's the number one most requested item um, when natural disasters do occur. Um, this is a event that we did in the South Bronx. Um, we do it annually, we go up, we distribute food and non-perishable items, children's books, clothing to about 800 families in the poorest congressional district, um, not just in New York, but in the entire country. Uh, so it's a real experience for a lot of us, really come, have come to appreciate it. This is the guy right here that heads up our entire office. Um, so he uh, grew up out in, at Metro, it's the guy on the right, chubbier guy, I don't know how to describe him. Maybe cut that from the video for recording it. <laughs> um, but he, uh, he's, he will get his, come out with his hands dirty just like the rest of us and we, uh, CWA is our uh, female um, recruitment and retention tool. So it's a networking program designed for uh, women, but obviously men can participate. Uh, this was our CWA group of a couple years ago, and looking at it now, there are one, two, three, four, four partners, including our test practice leader, um, and then three directors in that group that it all come up to the program. And it's our way of really connecting with our community. And so through Dress for Success, we'll do a lot there. Corporate Challenge, my favorite event of the year. It's coming up in about eight weeks now. Uh, it's 5K through, no, I guess more than that, 12 weeks. It's 5K through, man, through Central Park. Um, then we all go out and do a happy hour. And so it's a two hour open bar. And uh, so I just paid the tab on that and I'm excited for that event. It's always a good time. So, create a positive impression. First thing you notice when you walk, walk into people, how they're dressed, how they look, uh, how they speak, uh, posture and demeanor. So, there are a lot of things that are thrown at you initially when you meet someone. And it takes a lot to change these types of things. So, I do a course on um, bias on an annual basis within CBiz. Actually, every six months I do it. Um, even if we're not noticing it, we are impacted by our own personal biases, um, and many of these things are influenced by that. And then it takes a lot to realize that, hey, I need to raise my awareness enough to acknowledge that I'm being influenced by these types of things that I've always known or thought I've known, and then how can I adopt and adjust to what's going on? But for some people, they're not thinking about that, and first impressions mean everything. Um, communication. I don't know where my campus recruiter got these statistics. Uh, she sent me over the slide and said, hey, your words mean 7% of what's going on. Your tone is 38%. And finally, the image that you're presenting is 55%. For her, it was, you know, your image or your executive presence, if you will. You go into a lot of board meetings, if you go into a lot of uh, meetings where you're going to find 
executive leaders, the thing that they always talk about when they're talking about the people that are coming up to the organization is going to be their executive presence. And so by that they mean their image and how they have a uh, calm demeanor in terms of their tone. So a lot of the words that get said mean absolutely nothing. So maybe <laughs> executive presence also means absolutely nothing. Um, so you graduated. Obviously, uh, you came through a great kind of program through FDU or you came through another school and are now in the master's program. Either way, you learn a lot in school, and so you're going to be looking to utilize those skills to be successful into your next role. So really, everything that I taught you in school gets thrown out the window immediately when you start your career because they're going to find that you're going to have to start developing specialized skills immediately. Um, some of you will be going big four. Um, others will be going mid-size, some of you will be going industry. And so each of your uh, roles will have skills that they're going to expect from you to be successful in that role. Um, one of the things that we always talk about when we meet our first year group and our intern group is that we always want to see when people walk in that they be consistent, that they produce quality work, and they're always going to have sustainable results. And so it's easy to bust out the door and knock the first couple projects out of the park and then kind of um, fall off the edge. And so we always just want to see people be consistent in the work product that's being done. Um, obviously, you're going to spend a lot of time developing time management, project management, leadership skills. The last time I was here, I think I talked about time management. If I didn't, it's a, pro it's a presentation that's coming at some point. Um, it's one of those things I care about. And then as you advance in your career, uh, teaching and coaching and developing others becomes the most important skill you can have in place. So I talked about awareness beforehand. Um, humans by nature are going to have very rapid um, decisions that are made and when they initially meet someone. And then once you have that decision made, you kind of lock into it. Humans really aren't all that flexible. Um, so again, by raising self-awareness, be, being aware of the fact that you know, you're going to be impacted by these types of things, it can go a long way in helping you adapt and overcome to certain challenges you're going to experience in your career. Um, we talked about, in my world, we talked about uh, cultural, cultural awareness a lot, um, but obviously there are going to be different types of awareness, things that will, you know, you're going to have to be familiar with and know how to navigate in order to be successful within that. Um, performance expectations, your employer is going to lay out performance expectations. Um, they're going to give you the tools that you need to be successful within your role. They're going to tell you how to be successful in your role. It's your responsibility for being able to kind of bring yourself up to meet that expectation. Um, they'll give you all the tools, you just need to execute. Um, and then you should always be cognizant of what the goals of your leaders are, what the goals of your coworkers are. Um, you know, some people you know, just want to come in and go home and leave. Other people, you know, they want to be able to build a legacy within the work that they're doing. So, um, I also know that our paid off side sponsors back here. What are her goals? So, what are her goals for the group? So, you should, you know, these are things you should be thinking about. And, you know, what you can do to be successful there. Um, creating a plan, so obviously you want to, uh, when I was in school, before I was working in HR, I actually wanted to be a labor organizer. Um, and so in labor organizing, basically you're trying to implement social change within the work that you're doing. Um, so obviously I was going to try to work within unions. And so within that you have to know who your constituents are, who are the people that are going to be working with you, who are going to be the people that are working against you, who are the people you can influence. And so understanding and how, how you can develop and then leverage these groups um, goes a long way. Um, trust and trust, building trusting relationships is important. Uh, it's the one thing I'm always assessed on in my overall performance review. Uh, I just had it a couple weeks ago, so I'm thinking about it. Um, and then finding ways to create exposure for other people that are within your network. Uh, and this is kind of the summary on building the network. Obviously, you want to have people that will advocate for you, um, and then you can advocate for others as well. Um, you know, kind of how I look at it. Uh, professional expectations and steps. 
So you're dropping to your first job, your first internship. You're going to do at least one day of orientation, I hope. Uh, but ideally, it's going to be a pretty lengthy orientation. So you're going to be able to get familiarized with not just the work that you're doing, but your coworkers, uh, your new living situation, your commute, everything that falls into an orientation. I remember when I first started working in the city three and a half years ago, I was like, oh, this commute's super easy. You just take the train in. I was wrong. I was so very wrong. Um, but I did get to meet a lot of my new coworkers. Um, and then obviously, you know, people always think of work is just work. Um, if you're in public accounting, it's also going to become a major route for your social life. Uh, you're going to hang out with a lot of your coworkers. I've seen uh, a lot of friendships develop, a lot of romantic relationships develop out of that world. Um, so obviously care about your social life as well. <laughs> I always enjoy this slide because uh, it's always learn to lay the land, familiarize yourself with facilities. Um, really my first step in anywhere I go is to figure out where the heck the bathroom is. Figure out where the bathroom is, figure out where the kitchen is. So I know the men's room in this room is right out this door. Um, and also uh, emergency escapes, but that's a different story. Um, and then establishing credibility, as I had noted earlier, being able to uh, deliver a consistent work product um, goes a long way there. And then finally, get to know your bosses and coworkers, things that I've already talked about that keep reinforcing um, on itself. Uh, so understanding what's expected of you. Again, you're gonna walk into work. You know, your your goal is figuring out: Do I have? Do I know what's expected of me? Have my bosses told me? my boss is about what's expected of me. And then do you have the materials and the equipment to do it right? Ideally, come into the world of accounting, people are gonna set you up for success in that regard. And then you have to be able to kind of effectively execute these areas. So listening to others, uh, prioritizing, prioritizing becomes important in everything that you're gonna do because you're gonna get a million things thrown on your desk at any point in time. Um, it's important to figure out what's gonna be uh, most critical to be done. Uh, taking notes, I, on my first, on any person's first day, whether it be a partner or it be an intern, I'm leaving them with a pad of paper and a pen just so that they can effectively take notes within that world. And then I watch them. Um, I'll be like, hey, remember to take notes, and then I'll be checking their, checking to see if they actually wrote anything throughout my presentation or the presentations that follow. And then being honest about your skills, knowing where, where your gaps are, knowing where you need to improve, and then being able to kind of bring that to the next level. Uh, you know, getting to know your coworkers. Obviously, I talked about CBIS quite a bit. Um, I know all 174 other associates within my building by first name. Know most of their family members. Uh, know which one of which ones plan on staying in public accounting. Which ones are definitely leaving public accounting when they have the opportunity. Um, you know, being able to know who you're working. Um, I learned this the hard way. I, uh, when I joined Wisson Company, I didn't necessarily respect my predecessors. I was a cocky 20, 23, 24 year old coming out and being like, all right, I graduated from the Rutgers program in the HR management, I'm a big deal. And so I came in and said, let me just change all the processes. And it really upset a lot of people. They were more effective and I got referred to that eventually. But really understand the political label and how you can influence things. And by kind of being courteous and not complaining about how things are done, um, you understand why things were done that way, and then you can tell them, hey, okay, so we've been doing it this way. This is a more effective way to execute what we're looking to accomplish here. So. Perhaps my favorite slide in this entire slide deck, because it says power on power. And everybody always says, oh, I don't want to play the office politics game. I think that's a waste of time. Power in politics is literally everything in public accounting. There are going to be people that can, be ad that can advocate for you, that can stall your career really quickly. And by being able to identify who these people are and how they can further advance your career, um, to me, that's the most important thing. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be you know, Game of Thrones where you're all people left and right or House of Cards where you're also offing people left and right. Um, you know, there are 
are subtle ways of playing power and playing politics by being able to deliver favors with, for someone without any ask and return. You know, goes a long way by being able to network and get to know your coworkers on a consistent basis, uh, showing up at happy hours and picking up around. You know, those are the things that, that will influence social power within the office. Um, and obviously, your firm's going to talk about the career pathways that you have going on. We'll talk about the review systems, um, the training. A lot of the things will be set up for it for you to just flow naturally from point to point to point. And you won't even necessarily notice that these things are going on unless they're actually going on. As an immigration act. Um, and then you just want to create a positive impression. You know, being a team player, I think, is important. Being able to kind of step forward, take on additional responsibilities, and then hitting your targets, um, hitting your goal, being able to execute what you're saying you're going to execute, very important in what you do. So that's that from that angle. So why CBIS? Why I chose CBIS personally? Um, I've always worked in public accounting as a professional. In a prior life, I was managing a liquor store. Managing a liquor store sucks. Um, <laughs> uh, you have an interesting clientele. You're doing a lot of blue-collar work. I also worked in manufacturing prior to this. Um, so I've always worked in public accounting. It's an environment that I know. It's an environment that I like working with because people always seem to care about the development of others within their organization. Um, it's one of the things that I really come to enjoy about public accounting is that career advancement is whatever you want it to be. Um, Work-life balance. So it's not public yet, so cut the tape again. Uh, but we're also moving to Summer Fridays this year. Uh, so we're going to be closing every Friday um, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, so I'm excited about that. Um, but otherwise, you know, work-life balance is going to be whatever work-life balance is. Busy season is always going to be busy season. There's always going to be hours. Um, but we try to adapt to that in other ways. So um, we're hoping that Summer Fridays is an additional step in that direction. We've already had been closing uh, at 1 o'clock on Fridays. Giving people the whole day at this point. Uh, advancement is paramount for me. I came from Wisconsin Company, like I said, I love the firm, I love the culture, I love the people. Um, but there was no upward mobility for me, at least, on the HR function. Uh, so I came into SEBAs, um, had the opportunity to relocate to Denver, Colorado, and then staying, but now I cover basically the entire Mid Atlantic region for SEBAs. Um, and there's obviously a lot of room for growth for all of our uh, associates coming in as well. Part partners are not getting any younger, and they're always want to look, wanting to pass down their piece of the business and you know get to their own 